Gospels. Turn with me to the Gospel of Luke chapter 22. I want to read in your hearing Luke chapter 22. I want to read verses 31 and 32 and then we're going to skip down and pick up with the narrative in verse 55 and read through the conclusion of verse 62. These verses constitute the framework for our sermonic time together tonight. Simon, Simon, Peter, listen. Satan has asked excessively that all of you be given up to him out of the power and keeping of God that he might sift all of you like grain. But I have prayed especially for you, Peter, that your own faith may not fail. And when you yourself have turned again, strengthen and establish your brethren. Verse 55, and when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and were seated together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him as he sat in the firelight and gazing intently at him, said, This man, too, was with him. But he denied it and said, Woman, I don't know him. And a little later, someone else saw him and said, You're one of them also. But Peter said, Man, I am not. And when about an hour more had elapsed, still another emphatically insisted it is the truth that this man also was with him, for he too is a Galilean. But Peter said, man, I do not know what you're talking about. And instantly while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter, and Peter recalled the Lord's words, how he had told him before the cock crows today, you will deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly, that is, with painfully moving grief. Turn, take somebody by the hand, look at him in the eye, tell him it's time to fix my loose threads. Turn the person on the other side, tell him it's time to fix my loose threads. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Fixing life's loose threads Peter's been blessed ever since that day Philip ran to get him exclaiming that he has in fact found the Messiah and while the journey for them has been fast paced and spiritually demanding he and the others chosen to be the Lord's 12 disciples have grown immeasurably while they've grown, they've needed correction, instruction, forgiveness, for at times letting ambition get the best of them. They have at times operated excessively selfish, carnally, limiting their thoughts only on things seen, and refusing to be stretched by the Messiah to accept the possibility of things not seen. They have resisted the temptation at times to see Jesus as nothing more than a zealot, amassing a group of would-be assassins so together they can hijack Roman soldiers passing through these little poor communities that are being oppressed and left out of national progress. And Peter leads the pack for what spirituality in process looks like. He blurts out things without weighing his words first. He functions at times with temper over discernment. He makes promises with not sufficient funds in the account to pay on them. Such is the setting of our text tonight. Jesus is nearing the end. He's bridging the gap between Israel's understanding of God as taught from the altar of the temple and he has become literally the embodiment of the temple in human flesh. Remember, in Jesus, what you have is the incarnation of every Old Testament feast and festival. Every celebration and every sacrifice required at each one of them. That is to suggest that Jesus is the altar and the sacrifice. He is the king and the lamb. He is the law and the spirit. And he's nearing the crescendo of earthly events where upon the hill outside of Jerusalem, he will lift the curtain on God's salvific reign and with triumphant resurrection, days later he will establish forever a throne and a temple in the human heart. That is of every person who would dare call on the name of the Lord. 
The disciples have heard Jesus intently when he said, I did not come to destroy the law, but I've come to fulfill it. Peter lately has been making bold statements of personal intentions he can't live up to. Talking about how far he's willing to go for the Lord and why he won't ever allow certain things to happen to Jesus. And Jesus turns to him on one occasion and says, Peter, Satan has asked me to leave you partially exposed. He's asked me to let him pull on the loose thread that is hanging in your life. And Peter, maybe that's why he asks for you and not James, not John. He asks for you. Perhaps because he knows you're wearing a nice garment of discipleship, commitment, all those things you've been blurting out. But there's a thread hanging. Selfish ambition, overconfidence, maybe even some would suggest it's arrogance. Impulsive decision making, need to always be first or best or loudest. And so Satan asks me to stop wrapping your loose garment in my grace. He wants me to expose you and to let that loose thread be pulled on for a season and pull on it, Satan will. Almost like grain being sifted and you, Peter, you're going to give in to it. The good news is it won't destroy you. You're going to make a comeback. And when you do, don't you dare forget about how forgiven you are and how that defines how you survived. Don't forget what you learned about yourself and what you learned about the Father and how that shapes how you'll treat other people and how you'll feed your leadership. And Peter, don't forget how much you know God supported you. And I want you to use it all to strengthen and encourage the brethren. Now, after Jesus says this to Peter, we see not many verses later that the loose thread in his life has been pulled on until Peter is now a separated garment at the seams, and we see it, don't we? He follows the arresting mob, taking Jesus to be examined. He pauses in the courtyard of the high priest, warms his hands by the fire, and the exposed and separated seams in his life are now gravely exposed. He's noticed. And when confronted, he denies Jesus. In fact, three times, we read it three times by three different people. His denial becomes more agitated until he's finally cussing his denial of any attachment to Jesus at all. Now, this is the Peter, remember, who said, I'm in. I can be counted on. No matter what, no matter how far, no matter at what expense, Jesus, I'm in. Now he's denying any relationship with Jesus. And when that thread is pulled on strong enough, we find the one who makes the great declaration of Jesus being the son of the living God, now cursing his defiant assertions and trying to suggest, I don't even know that man. Then the cock crows. And Peter realizes, Wheeler, how quickly a pulled loose thread can become a living tragedy. Jesus looks at Peter as he's being led to what will eventuate in his own crucifixion. And when Peter sees Jesus staring right at him, the Bible says he weeps as a sign of repentance. That's the story. I lifted briefly tonight to ask you but one prevailing question. What's the loose thread hanging in your life tonight? Is it all right that I go this slow? Is it attitudinal? Is it behavioral? Is it emotional? Is it spiritual? Is it relational? Is it a habit, a need, a drive? Is it a controlled addiction, a compulsion, a reaction? Is it perhaps judgmentalism or pride or envy or scorn? I'm asking you, what's the hanging thread in your life? I know nobody sees it, so you think. And maybe I ought to suggest first, please know every one of us in this room has at least one hanging loose thread. Do I have any company here tonight? 
And the fact that it's hanging means perhaps you're not praying about it, you're not fighting against it, you're not strongly resisting it, you're walking around acting like you're the only one who knows it and nobody else can ever peek it, nobody has a perception that it exists in your life and it's a strong reason for why Satan has been asking for you. What threads do you notice in your life that you've convinced yourself will never create for you a disastrous eventuality? Why? Because you're better than every generation before who has had to struggle with that same loose thread. Nobody in Wheeler is ever going to be exposed to this. For Peter, it was overestimation of his strengths, his competencies his abilities we saw it in verse 33 it was mismanagement of a moment of spiritual confrontation he went for preservation rather than for the boldness of spiritual witness he chose to save himself rather than to own his connection and his relationship with jesus and thank god tonight he caught it sold that loose thread with the needle of repentance before it was too late and it's the only reason I'm lifting the text tonight because loose threads don't have to be destructive if you learn how to address them before they jeopardize the rest of the proverbial garment in other words whatever you discern are things tonight in your life about your life that are not being fed to grow you the best that god intends for you don't ignore it for fear that others will judge you for still being under spiritual construction. Don't ignore it because somebody in the soprano, the alto, the tenor, or the no tone section is going to think that you're not as spiritual as you've been perpetrating. Don't ignore those loose threads because you don't like dealing with the ugly part of who you are. Don't ignore the loose threads and hope they're just going to fade to oblivion because Satan has been asking for you. And each time he is given permission to pull on that loose thread, it is a revelation of how close you are to becoming a separated garment. And so what Jesus does for Peter that makes it possible for him to repent later is, one, he doesn't let him ignore the presence of the loose thread, listen to me, when it wasn't a major problem. In other words, he exposes it with preventive measures. It's what I want to call the gift of spiritual correction. It's God shaping you with the discipline of confrontation. I know we live in a high, erroneous, charismatic age where so much of the prophetic prognostications we're hearing deals less and less with the fact that God will jump up in your face to correct things now so they won't destroy you later. I know, I believe God gives you favor and blessing and prosperity and all that, but how many of y'all can testify I'm glad that God not only gives me favor and prosperity and blessing, but I'm glad that God will chastise and confront me and address me about the dysfunctional bipolar multiple personality me that acts one way on Sunday and another way on Monday and when nobody else will God will jump up in your face and he'll tell you you know you're functioning with personality duplicity <laughs> and the lesson is simple don't ignore loose threads because when you start accepting abnormalities as norms, when fatal decisions become regular chosen options, when you stop feeling convicted about a wayward practice or habit, when you stop seeing righteousness as a preferred lifestyle, you got a hanging loose thread. Don't convince yourself that you can live normal forever with a loose thread hanging in your life just because it's not bad right now. 
that's the question early should I acknowledge this tonight this anger I keep releasing the allowance I keep making the habit I keep feeding this thing I keep ignoring these people I keep hanging with should I deal with it while it's easy to correct so I won't let it grow until it snatches my future and my destiny can I can I be busy can I be busy and better and do well in battle and enjoy holistic happiness with duration with this area still loose and unaddressed? And I would dare say, no, my brother, no, my sister, you cannot. And so in my estimation, the gift the Lord gives Peter and the gift that the Lord gives to us is his all-knowing expression of the loose thread and his promise of provision. Now, don't steal my sermon after this, but listen to what Jesus says. Are y'all ready for it? Come on, I know y'all don't know me. I don't know y'all too well either. But can you talk to me? I'll talk to you if you talk to me. Are you ready for it? Yeah. All right, Peter, you got a loose thread. And if you let me confront it early, it won't embarrass you later. And here's the fix. I have prayed for you. Let, now let me tell you why I know some of y'all's mind is on the rain and the storm. Let me tell you why I know that. Because I can understand no response if I had said, me, William Curtis, is praying for you. Because it depends on what day and what mood I'm in that would determine the content of that prayer I utter to the Father on your behalf. But we talking about Jesus. suggesting that I and the father have been in conversation you came up and I asked the father to do certain things for your life I mean we were talking about a whole lot of other things how hot the sun should be what section of creation needs rain we were trying to figure out how do we solve these problems in Baltimore and in this cycle of African-American men being killed senselessly but while we were strategizing all that your name came up and I asked the father to fix your loose thread now y'all talking about the need to give God praise and worship? I can always give God worship when I think about the fact that all day long Jesus is leaning over to the Father and calling my He says I've, he says, I've talked to God about, about you. Now watch this because here's the hard part. Peter, I've talked to God about you. Not just your virtues. But here and I've been talking about your vices. So I talked to God about you, not just your strengths. But me and the Father have been talking about your weaknesses. We've, we've shaped your future, watch this, with living through this as part of the plan. So Peter, don't be too hard on yourself at the revelation and exposure of the fact that you got some hanging loose threads because me and the father have been talking about them and we've already shaped your life after this we already see you strengthening the brethren some of y'all still didn't get it and we're so confident that you're gonna pass through this season that we are issuing you a ministry command on the other side of this fatalistic intersection you are going through right now. You got some loose threads hanging, but don't be too hard on yourself because we've already envisioned your next week and your next week looks a whole lot better than this week. Uh-huh. My point, and I move on, don't ignore the loose threads in your life that you know the Lord is not only making you aware of, but talking to the Father about for you. If Jesus is praying about what is a loose thread in your life, then you need to give some attention to it. Don't write it off as a necessary evil. Going around, writing it off as a description of the common trait of your particular personality type or zodiac sign. Talking about, well, I act that way because I'm an A-type personality. You know us Leos, that's how we are. No, don't blame others. Stop. 
stop blaming others that if they would do this you would do that no it's your loose thread and you got to stop treating it as a norm don't accept it in fact fight it address it confront it correct it run from it overcome it sacrifice it pray about it live above it stop treating it like it's a norm would you help me help somebody turn and grab somebody by the hand tell them stop treating it as a norm it ain't right for you to have an attitude every day it ain't right for you to be nasty every day it ain't right for you to be pessimistic every day it ain't right for you to be fatalistic every day it ain't right for you to be cynical every day it ain't right for you to be skeptical every day it ain't right for you to not like anybody every single day you gotta fight it confront it Cause it ain't normal and the gift God has given you is to make you aware of it because child of God it's innocent now it's quiet now it's not too dangerous now it's not too destructive now it's not demanding too much of you now but I'm making you aware of it so you can address it now while it's weak enough to be defeated when uh when jesus healed that man laying for 38 years by the pool of bethesda and saw him later in church he said to him you've been made well listen to it stop sinning or it's gonna be worse the next time in other words you just had a hanging thread and that cost you 38 years but if you let that tear away at your life until it separates you at the seams, you're going to lose far more next time. So go and live with the blessing of having your loose threads tightened and sewn back into the garment of your life by the needle of my grace and mercy and go and sin no more. Let's the hold it too long, no to no loose threads. Secondly, know that there's a time and a method for correction. And it starts when I'm aware of it. Now, what I want to do is, I want to stretch theological reflection to suggest that to me, this is a derivative definition of grace. God's grace is that God makes you aware of some things, knowing the potentiality for destruction if there is the absence of that same awareness. So my point is, be aggressive about what the Lord won't let you ignore because that's his grace are you listening to me so when god makes you aware of a behavior a mindset a response an allowance treat it as a gift no matter how ugly it is i wish i i wish sometimes that i could stand and say exactly what's on my mind we always have to polish what we want to say because y'all can't i feel almost like jesus you know how long shall i suffer with you how long shall i be with you you can't handle the expression the way you know what I'm saying. but church ought to be the place where ugly gets to work it out because in my estimation i'm 30 years in in my estimation we get so polished to come to church that we cover up stuff that needs to be confronted when we get here and if i can't trust being ugly around people who understand that ugly might be my start but it doesn't have to be my finish then where am I ever gonna work it out so here we are faking it how you doing I'm blessed and I'm highly favored that ain't how you feeling and you know it ain't how you feeling stop lying and when folks ask you how you doing tell them I'm stressed I'm about to kill everybody I don't know how to handle it and somebody need to help me and guess what your neighbor if they tell the truth will put their arm around you and tell them you know what I'm in the exact same place let's go to the altar together and ask God to help us work it out do I have any company in this room because the Bible says know the truth <laughs> this is all Jesus is offering Peter Peter you're a faithful disciple you're a devoted follower you're a maturing friend. You're a church leader in progress. But you have a loose thread. Watch this. That will not hurt you until the apostolic mantle is put on your back. 
What's going on in your life right now is okay. It's why I'm giving you the grace of awareness because this won't hurt you until your leadership has to limp through the spiritual movement post my ascension. Let's address it now because it's not going to embarrass you now. But if we don't address it now, it will embarrass you when you become the adversary to the Jewish establishment. That's going to plot and plan the demise of this infant street ministry I've given my life for. And when you stand to defy the wishes of the synagogue or the instructions of those who give leadership to the same, they're going to have this fodder attached to your life. And to live with that kind of attack against your life and to have to politically and spiritually respond to accusers both from within and without to expect my return tomorrow. And I know I'm not coming back for generations. I need to make you aware of this now. You got some hanging threads, bruh. And we need to tighten them up. It's not because I like dangling your faults in your face. It's not because I want to put your stuff out there. But awareness becomes the dumping ground for baggage you don't need to live on the other side. It's the revelation of how greatly you are going to be used and how valuable you are to the expansion of the kingdom. Watch this. Peter, if I didn't think you were valuable on the other side, I'd let you go around with your hanging loose thread. I'm making you aware of it because I want to keep making you stronger for the movement and stronger for the part you're going to play in. And am I talking to anybody in here? Because does this not explain, my brother, my sister, why friends of yours who don't come to Wednesday in the Word seem to be getting away with everything? And it seems like every time you stick your hand in the proverbial cookie jar, it's like God is right over your shoulder talking about you know, child of God, you should not be doing that. It seems like other people are able to connive and trick and slick their way through life. And it seems like they're still making good money, getting promotions on the job, driving around in nice cars, rolling on 24s. And you're wondering, how come I'm the one who's got to suffer? And it's because God says, what I got to do for your future. I need to make sure you don't do life with loose threads. Others can do life with loose threads because they're not going to impact creation like I intend for you to impact creation. But the way I want to use you, I can't let you grow with compromise. Can I tell somebody, pay strict attention. I'm not going to be long. Pay strict attention to what God won't let you ignore about you in this season it's a chance to address now what positions you for where you're on your way to later that if you don't deal with the loose thread or threads now it will put your garment of holiness and service at risk when you are center stage I, I'm a Mission Impossible man I love watching the Mission Impossible movies why are you laughing at me I like Mission Impossible you know if you choose to accept this mission I like Mission Impossible you know you like what you like I like what I like I got both sides I gotta deal with her and you at the same time Lord help me tonight I like Mission Impossible. I love Philip Seymour Hoffman. Y'all remember Philip Seymour Hoffman? He's such a great actor. I love his villain roles in movies. And to consider that he died in a room alone from a heroin injection, from a needle pushed in his veins, and it became a revelation of how loose threads went unaddressed while millions of dollars were going into the bank. Why accolades were coming his way. Why he had as many people that envied him as there were that admired him. And how many people knew that all the while there was a habit being fed periodically at first. Spontaneously at first. Every now and then at first. Until it became so regular and so toxic that in a room by himself. He died from injection of drugs. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but be grateful that God keeps pushing it, whatever it is, in your face. Be grateful that God keeps shoving it in your path forcing you to wrestle with it every time you even consider doing it again or going there again or allowing it again. Don't be sad. 
that it's a recurring battle for you, be grateful it's still a battle. And you fight, run the race, so as to win the prize. Because awareness becomes the usher who shows discernment into the conference room of awareness and becomes your personal assistant to tell you your one o'clock meeting has arrived and you jump up running there because anything God has to say to you about anything God wants to say to you is better than you living with God not saying anything to you at all. How much time I got? All right, one more thing. Donate Lord loose threads and then accept the method of correction, which is awareness. And then finally, leave the options for how to fix it to Jesus. Say it with me. Leave the options for how to fix it to Jesus. This is critical so that you and I don't simply trade one loose thread for another one because you can mess around and pull too excessively on the place that has partial separation and end up jeopardizing the whole garment are you listening in Peter's life he chooses here it is to let him walk into a situation where he will unravel but not in the presence of people that will negate his future potential. Did you catch it? Okay. What's interesting, Pastor Cosby, about Peter's courtyard scene is his ranting would have been far more costly if it were done in front of the Sanhedrin. Would have been far more costly if in front of rulers, scribes, elders, and chief priests. Jesus says, we got to deal with the loose thread. And I got to let you partially unravel. But before I expose you to a place where unraveling would negate a comeback, I'm going to let you fall apart in the courtyard. So you don't fall apart center stage. I wish I had somebody in here. Y'all stood. Some of y'all still didn't get it. I could have let you fall apart right in front of the Sanhedrin council and it would have minimized the power of my whole street movement. But instead, I'm going to let you fall apart in the courtyard where those who exposed you could not stop what I'm trying to do in you. And you falling apart in the courtyard will become a part of your memory bank and you'll live every day so as to never be in that predicament again. Can I get somebody in here, if you're honest, to testify that you are glad that God dealt with you the way he did, when he did, where he did, because he did it in a way that protected your future. And the only reason you in here tonight able to give God praise and worship without feeling embarrassed is because almost everybody in here don't know anything about how ugly you acted when you were in the courtyard. And guess what? They ain't gotta know because it ain't none of their business. It was God being good to you. Do I have any company here? I can't, I can't get somebody in here to be honest enough that God let you fall apart when nobody was looking and God let it fall apart when nobody would, could be judgmental. And here you are tonight saying amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Have I got any company here? I'm about ready to leave you alone, but grab somebody by the hand and shake it like you're trying to shake them into salvation and go ahead and confess and tell your neighbor, neighbor, you ain't got no idea how much embarrassing stuff uh, has been connected to my life uh, and I ain't got time to tell you I don't even want to go back through it but can I just tell you that God is good 
that he let it happen then and didn't let it happen now because all things work together for good have I got a witness here tonight for those of us uh, who are called according to his purpose so help me help somebody else and I promise I'm gonna leave you alone but can you touch five to seven people and tell them I'll see you on my comeback uh, yes I will I got some loose threads hanging but please be patient with me because God ain't through with me yet uh, and the things I used to do uh, I still do them sometimes and the places I used to go I still go sometimes but if you stop judging uh, and if you start praying uh, and if you let the Lord have his way uh, then one of these days I'll be able to testify the things I used to do I don't do anymore have I got any company here put your arm around somebody and tell them let the Lord have his way until you can testify I feel better so much better since I laid my burdens down friends don't treat me I'm trying to get somebody in the balcony to talk back to me like they used to since I laid my burdens down can we have an apostolic moment in here can you push somebody and tell them burdens down Lord burdens down since I laid my burdens down so what do you do after you lay your burdens down if I'm gonna lay my burdens down I'm gonna pick my praise up and thank God so wish that we could reframe the whole conversation about church one of my members emailed me this morning because I've been trying to get my leaders to understand that we are for the first time in a de-Christianized America yeah. and there's speculations as to multiplicity of reasons as to why that's taking place but I can offer some suggestions some suggestions that part of the reason folk ain't flocking to these churches like they used to is because they ain't seeing us be real about the spirituality we say we have I've been, I've been I've been doing this since I was 17 years old and I've told every church I passed I'm in my second church and I told both of them now y'all give me some room give me some room to work my life out and some of that ain't gonna be pretty in front of you because if you don't like you every day you sure enough ain't gonna like me every day so let me work it out I'm at to learn how to deal with attitude I'm from the ghetto I'm defensive I'm a black man and you know that's living while in jeopardy. So I, you know, I, I got an edge to me. And on the wrong day at the wrong time, you say the wrong thing, it comes out. <laughs> Give me some courtyard space. I ain't gonna be there forever I'm just passing through there but if you give me some space I'll be better what you don't want me to do is so listen to me what you don't want me to do is to suppress in a season what become exposed in another season and I don't have the maturation to handle it 
Who am I talking to? Uh -huh. Come on, hands are lifted. Heads are elevated. If you're not standing, I want you to stand on your feet. I want to pray for you. Then I want you to pray with me. Because you got some loose threads. And stop ignoring them. Stop hiding them. Accept God's method of correction. Accept his season of awareness. And go ahead and work it out in the courtyard. Because where he's taking you, you don't want that baggage. So work it out in the courtyard. And so God, I come in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I ask in this room tonight that all of us would accept the reality that we got loose threads hanging. We can't be perfect because our living journey demands that sanctification becomes a continual process. So we're still being sanctified. And as a result of that, that means we've got some things that still have yet to be shaped, conformed to your image. We're not always living totally according to your will. And we accept that. And part of the reason we accept it is because you accept us even in these seasons. Thank you that your grace is strong enough to confront us and to make us aware of the loose threads in our lives. And tonight, for those of us who would dare pray the prayer, we say like David when offered the option to fall into the hands of man or to fall into your hands, we choose every single time to fall into your hands. Have your way in each of our lives. Mold us and shape us. Thank you that you do it in the courtyard. And you preserve the center stage for our best performances. And for that tonight, we honor you. In the name of Jesus.